Welcome back to Let's Make a Game. Um, I promised in the last video that I would show you a more elegant way to use links, in particular um, when we were choosing which race our character would be. And so that's what I'm going to do in this uh, chapter. Now, just to refresh your memory, and I'll zoom in a little bit. The way we've got the game set up now, it starts by saying choose your race, dwarf, elf, or human, and then you you click on the player clicks on one of those, and that takes them to a page, either dwarf, elf, or human, and the diff in that page it sets the variable r to whatever number, and then it goes from there to cross or wade, which is the page where you have the choice to cross the, or the player has the choice to cross the river or try and use the bridge. Now, you probably notice that this text here, dwarf and elf and human, they, that both is the text that is displayed to the player, and it is also the name of the page where the game goes if the player clicks on that particular um, choice. And you probably can think that there might be a problem there because what if you have, for example, uh, it's in a dungeon and at one point you have the choice to turn right. And what if in a completely separate place you have the choice turn right? Well that'll both point to the page turn right, but you don't want it to point to the same page, you want it to be two different pages, and so you might distinguish it by saying turn page, sorry, turn right one and turn right two, but you don't want to display the text turn right one, you want to display the text turn right. So you might ask, well, is there a way to separate those two jobs that the text has? Is there a way to make the one set of text display and another set of text be where it goes if you choose that one? And the answer is, of course, yes. And I'll show you, I've zoomed in because there's a few special characters here and you have to get it exactly right as is usual with anything to do with computers. You have to get it exactly right for it to work. Um, so we have the uh, square brackets twice and then I've said I want a little man and that's the text that I want to display for the player. Then we have this character. I'm sorry to say I don't know what that character is called but I'll tell you where you find it. On my keyboard it's there's Q-W-E-R-T-Y-U-I-O-P then there's a button that has square brackets and sort of curly brackets then there's a button that has sort of end square brackets and end curly brackets and then there's a button that has a slash and also has a up and down line, a vertical line. And that's the one you want, the up and down line. And that separates the display text from the sort of page text. So I have, I want a little man, vertical line, dwarf, and then n square brackets, n square brackets. So let's test Let's test if that works first. Um, there's a lot of testing in in writing these uh, these games, and really in anything to do with computers. Um, I'm not going to sort of test everything fully as I would if I were writing a game properly, but just know that there's a lot of do one thing, you know, test and make sure it works. Do another thing test and make sure it works. And the reason you do that is that if you don't test after everything, if you do three or four things and then test it, if something doesn't work, you're not going to know which of the three or four things you've made a mistake in. And it's going to be a lot more than four times as long before you, before you find the mistake, in my experience. So it is actually quicker to sort of test everything as you go. But um, anyway, let's let's just test this. Uh, so we've made the change. We go to build, 
and then play. And it says, I want a little man, which is what we wanted for it to say. Now, what we want is for that to be the choice to be a dwarf. So when we choose to cross over the bridge, we should win the game. Let's see what happens. There is a fierce troll on the bridge, but you smite it with your axe, you win. Well, that's exactly what we wanted to happen. So we, and then if we choose wade across the river, you're too short and you, and you, and you drown. Which again, is exactly what we want. So, hooray, that worked. Now, that doesn't do the thing I promised to do. I'm going to show you how to do the thing that I promised to do. So we're going to go dwarf. Wait a minute, is it called? Is it called cross away? I think it's called cross away. So what we're going to do is we're going to send all three of them to the same place, cross or wade. And you might object, well, but then that'll make the choice. So now we're bypassing this, this, and this. We're going straight to this one, which is where you are given the choice to, uh, or where the player is given the choice to wade across the river or um, try and use the bridge. But you might object, well, if they all go to the same place, then the choice doesn't make any difference. Is there a way to make it make a difference? And of course, there is, and I'm going to show you how that works. Now, again, we have to zoom in because Again, there's a lot of special characters here. So what I've done is I've got square brackets, dwarf, up and down, whoop, up and down line. Sorry about that. Oh. I don't think there's a control Z on this thing, unfortunately. Uh, dwarf, uh, cross or wide, which is the destination. And then I've got N square brackets, another square brackets, dollars R to one, and then two N square brackets. Now, if you remember last video, you'll know that dollars something means a variable. And you might remember that dollars R is the variable that stores what choice the player has made in terms of whether they want to be a dwarf, elf, or human. And so you might think, well, that probably means set the value of R to 1. And you'd be absolutely right. So if they if, they, if the player clicks this, it'll say dwarf, it'll send them to cross or wade, and clicking that will set R to the value of one. This is exactly the same, except it displays elf instead of dwarf, and it sets R to two, and this one is exactly the same, except it's human and sets R to three. And because we've done that all in one, all in one hit, we don't need, because you, you remember last time what we did was Dwarf that set R to one and then and then just moved on to cross or wide. So we don't need dwarf L for we don't need the pages dwarf L for human anymore, so we can delete them. And the way you do that is you click on it so it's highlighted, you go to passage and you choose delete. So we'll do that for we shouldn't really delete things before testing them, but um I, know, I happen to know that this is going to work. So, All right, so let's just test it, though, again. Uh, as I say, normally you, would, normally you would test every single combination, or I would anyway. I'd choose dwarf, and then I'd wade across the river. Then I'd start again and choose dwarf and take the bridge. Then I'd choose elf, wade across the river, etc., etc. But I'm not going to do that because that would be a bit tedious to watch. Just know that that's what you'd normally do. And unfortunately, that is the, the sort of the quickest way to to do it. So let's choose dwarf. You must cross the river. Well, yes, we know that. And now wait across the river. We know that this should drown us. You are too short to keep your head above water and you soon drown, you lose. And that is good news because that's what we wanted. And if we were to choose the other five possible combinations of choice and race, we'd actually find that they all worked. Now... Before we go, I'll tell you something else. In this case, 
we've gone R to 1. Um, you could go R to R minus 100. So that's not a, it's not a set number. It's What that would be is set the value of R to its current value minus 100. Now, what would be the point of that? Well, what if these choices were different items that you could buy? You might have a variable that is your gold. And so you might want to go G to G minus 100. And that would mean that one of the effects of clicking that choice would be that you lose 100 gold. Um, you can have more than one effect. So you could go, this is just to make, we don't, we're not using the variable G, so. And that would be a way to do um, buying an item. You might say set the flag that says whether you have this item to one, set your gold to minus 100, and um, that way you don't have to have a separate page for everything. And we and you separate the different um, effects with a semicolon, which is what I got there. So. Of course, in, that won't have any real effect because <clears throat> we're not using G, but um, we can see that if we choose to play, that works fine. So that is how we... Actually, I'll get rid of... Sorry, I'll get rid of no, G to G minus 100 before we go. All right. So that is how to get a bit more out of out of links, how to display separate text to um, the, the page that you want to go to, um, and also how to make your links have effects other than going to another page if you want to keep track of different variables. So that concludes today's video and uh, I hope that I will hear from you, or I won't hear from you, I suppose, but I hope that you will tune in next time.